giving a flimsy piece of paper versus mounting. And the way that I think about it is when you give just that print unmounted, it has so many possibilities. As, you know, from a framer's perspective, there are so many ways that we can present that. Photographers just think it, it goes behind a mat and, and that's that and, and that's the way it's done. And that's not true. <laughs> There's actually a lot of different ways that a print can be mounted um, and displayed with different styles of matting. And, and there are different styles of matte mountings. And uh, when I first was like really getting into photography and like learning about pricing and like going to workshops and stuff back in the day, one of the things like when I learned that you know an 8 by 10 and smaller should cost the customer at least $75 and I you know like anyone I'm like shocked at that price but one of the things that they said which totally made sense is that if you mount it and like gift wrap it then it's like a present you know and like that it's 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 not just this flimsy piece of paper that they're used to getting it's something cool and special and different and like unique and so for me with my portraits I have been mounting my prints, um, just assuming that they were fine to go in frame. I'm not saying mounted prints are bad, and they are nice, and they are like a beautiful gift, and, and you feel, you know, like it is a more substantial object that you're giving to your client, but um, it becomes a little bit of a different animal for the framer to deal with, and for your client to deal with in, in a cost-effective way, and so to me... As a, as a photographer, if I think about giving my client a mounted print, I would think about giving it to them in a way that makes it a little bit more like a canvas. So it might be more affordable than a canvas at that size would be, but it, they could still um, treat it the same way as a canvas. Yeah, like, a, like that's already finished. Yeah, so because, you know, um, this is a ready-made frame, you know, it's got these turnkey latches, if you take this apart, I this is like a print of a photo that I took in a state park, and I went to I just liked it, and I went to FedEx office and made the print for seventy five cents because I knew that I didn't want to spend a ton of money on it. I was just like, oh, I really liked it, and I just want to have it. And uh, the only thing that fits in this frame is a print. I can't put a mat in this frame. I can't I can't put anything in this frame but a piece of paper. And a lot of ready made frames are like that. They don't allow that kind of space. So, you know, that's a good, that's a good point because I have like a really thin mount that I use for the small prints and I was always, uh, under the impression that I could just, that you could just put them in a frame, um, just a regular ready made frame. And I, and I've never had a client come back to me and say that it didn't fit. So that's why, but I, but I totally get what you're saying and what you were saying before in the thread about, um, the mat protecting the photo from the glass too, is also something to talk about, but um, yeah, no, I love that. And one of the reasons that I also love doing like, so as far as mounting goes, like there, when I first was doing them, because it was like, I'm charging a premium for the price to my client. So I would mount them and I, and I always looked at it like, well, then you could put it on an easel, you know, you could get like a nice little easel from Michael's or something. And the ones that I first did have this nice bevel to them. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it looks finished. It's a more finished product. It's a more finished product. But the newer ones are just like basically a piece of plastic mounted on flush and it's like those are the ones that I'm like they don't they don't really look that oh, nice like these beveled that. ones are gorgeous and I can put my logo on the back I love the beveled look but it's actually hard to find so but these beveled ones I probably would have just put it on an easel or you can lean it on a bookshelf mm -hmm. you know where it is now, was so, there ever an option for you to have a hanger on the back no no but that's a bummer I know. Yeah, I mean, it's just <laughs> nice. But, but I'd always, I'd always done my larger prints mounted, and then I, and then put, you could put them in a frame. But you're right that if, if you don't have the right frame, it, yeah. it, it might be more of a pain. So now I'm wondering. Um, it's just a good thing to think about, you know. Like I always felt like these fit, and I feel like I've put some in frames before. But being a photographer, I have a million different frames that have space for like a cardboard. I think what I would do is take out the cardboard backing that comes with the frame and, or whatever fluff they had. And I, it, then it really depends. It, so every frame is different. And so I, I, so this is, this is my little backstory. <laughs> my name is Emma. 
I am a photographer. My company's in the photography and I'm based out of New Britain, Connecticut. I was never supposed to be a photographer. You know, I was from middle school. I was going to be an artist. I was going to grow up and be a famous painter. And then somewhere in my last year of my Bachelor of Fine Arts, I knew I was not going to be a famous painter. So then I was going to be a famous art dealer. Um, <laughs> but I went to graduate school. I, uh, I did my BFA in painting in Florida, and then I did my MFA in studio art in Memphis. And uh, while I was doing my MFA, that's where I got into gallery work. And I, um, I really love doing gallery work. And during my BFA and my MFA, that's where I got into framing. I was working at a frame shop, and that's how I learned all the ins and outs. Of, of how to be archival and preserve artwork and all kinds of artwork, not just two-dimensional, um, three-dimensional artwork, the whole works, because that's part of working in a gallery and, and being part of a museum. Suffice to say, I didn't become a famous gallery owner either, <laughs> but I still have a love of art and, and the fine works and, and that informs my photography as well. Because I have that art education, a big part of that is you have to think about the presentation of your work from start to finish. So as a photographer, that's really important to me. And when I was working in framing, that was a big thing that I had to deal with is I would have clients come to me all the time, you know, from their family photographer or their wedding photographer, and they would have prints that they not only had paid hundreds or thousands of dollars for the session, but also, you know, depending on the size, hundreds of dollars for the print. And it was an odd size. It was a strange substrate. And they wanted to be able to frame it affordably because at this point they had invested well beyond what their budget really was. And, you know, as photographers, we're constantly talking about how important making and preserving memories are and that these are heirlooms and that, you know, they need to be, they, they need, you know, we say the word need a lot about these memories be yeah. preserved and protected and, and cherished for years to come you know and so i think we have a responsibility to think about our product beyond where it stops with us you know we're not the end of the line when right. we sell the prints of client yeah so, so that's why it's important to think about how your client is going to frame it and yeah I 100% agree. I feel, I feel like part of the problem is like photographers don't own it. You know, they're not, they're not owning the like business of photography enough. That's always what I'm talking about. It's like, yes, you're a photographer, but you're actually a business owner. That's actually what your job is. Your job, photography is actually second to reality, which is reality is I'm an entrepreneur and I own a business and the business I own happens to be a photography studio. So I'm a huge uh, proponent of just like thinking about it that way. It takes it, it, then it's a no brainer. It's like, why would you even not finish something for a client? Like for me, I go and actually hang it up because I know that's actually how it gets finished. <laughs> when my clients come and pick up their canvas or metal prints, they just never hang them up. It's just yet another step that's keeping them from enjoying their investment. Right. So if they live locally, I deliver it to them and hang it up right then. Like, cause otherwise then it's finished. <laughs> anything short of, anything short of that is not. Range. I can't do that service, but. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if they don't live here, then I, then I harass, then I harass them every week until it's done. <laughs> <laughs> but I just tell them, I'm like the day it comes and I'm sending the shipping information, like, you know, just hang it up then or it won't happen. And I'm, I'm very clear with them about it and it's true. Um, so I'm a, no, I, I 100% feel like it's our job as the professional to make sure that we finish the product for them. Yeah. So I totally agree. I mean, the only reason I do the mounted prints for is a small prints uh, for portraits, but even then, I mean, those are usually just like gift prints. Uh, and then I, I like mounting bigger pictures because they get flimsy. And what I've noticed is like, if, if somebody was going to take it to a framer, like sometimes like my out of town clients, they just if, to have it framed and then sent to them. Like there's some clients they are like, Oh no, I have, I actually do have a framer and I'll do it. So I actually usually mount those when they're ship, like, and then ship them. That way it doesn't get bent in transit. Cause like a 16 by 20 or even 11 by 14, 
it's very easy for the client to just use their fingers and bend and crease the right, right yeah especially if they try to roll it it'll get the little thumb creases. yeah so that's one of the reasons that i started mounting the larger sizes um but i if they're here i definitely finish it for them i have a local framer i use and like they know better than i do what even matt picks so <laughs> um oh. So yeah. you don't always use a white mat. <laughs> no, you don't need a white mat and a black frame. No, that's not. And what's that's what's great about having a framer that knows what they're doing. I'm all about like having a having a connection with a framer is the same as having a connection with a photographer where it's like that's your family photographer. That's the person that gets me. Like I can trust them. They know what they're doing. Um, and back in the day, I came from the photo lab days, and that's what a photo finisher was. Like, some people would come to the same person developing their film. Like, every family had their photo finisher. And uh, it's the same thing. It's like, that's what they do. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> let them do it. And so, uh, yeah, having a real framer that I've worked with over the years, it's just amazing the fun things that we could do together. And um, I actually worked at... A corporate frame shop but I delivered that level of service and I turned that corporate frame shop from a low volume not well not well reputed frame shop into one that was well loved and, and people came to and I I had clients who would only come to me I had referrals who would wait in line to only talk to me um, I, I had one customer she uh, brought me a new needle point every two weeks. You know, she would pick up the one that we had just framed and she would bring me a new one and a pie. Love um, it. <laughs> you Love know, it. And, and it is, it's about building relationships with your framer. And yeah. that's the thing I would and, absolutely... and finding And finding someone who cares about their job. I mean, yeah, that's, exactly. that's the key. I mean, the photo lab I worked for was a chain. So you could go to one chain, one of them and you get somebody who has no idea what they're doing. But then I had a, a degree from RIT with photography. So like, with me running the machine, I was giving out professional grade quality from a drugstore, you know? So right. yeah, it's the same thing. It's just a matter of like finding a person, finding person who actually cares about what they're doing, that's doing a good job and stays there long enough where you can build that rapport. Yeah. But one thing I would tell all photographers they should do is go to their, you know, their local Michaels, Hobby Lobby, Target, whatever, look at what the ready-made frames are that are available look at what the custom frame shop options are that are available because that's what your clients are going to be doing. Exactly. You know, go there and pretend that you're a client with one of your prints and see what the options are. You know, shop as though you're trying to frame the products that you give to your clients because that's how you're going to know how easy or difficult it is for your client to frame the product that you give them. And how much time it takes, like how stressful that is for your client, like especially if you're doing family portraiture, like moms are busy, like they don't need yet another errand and yet another thing they don't know how to do, you know, like going so what, the awkwardness of going oh, into it. It takes an hour to do yeah. a custom framing consult, minimum, to do a collage wall. Because even if you're framing all of them exactly the same, it's going to be like a step, each piece is its own order. And so the framer has to basically create a new order for every single piece. You know, and so that takes time, um, yeah. you know, and then not to mention the fact that it takes time. You know, you're talking about your clients, if they're having to do custom framing, it, you're looking at anywhere between several days to several weeks for those pieces to be finished and come back, you know. Yeah, exactly. And then there's yet another trip to the store. Right. And <laughs> like, yeah, so that's the way I always look at it with the photography. I'm like, we're the professionals, like we're solving problems for our clients. That's exactly how I look at sales. So a lot of, a lot of photographers and a lot of creatives, as you, I'm sure you're aware, feel like sales is a dirty word. And they're like, I don't want to be salesy. And I'm like, why not? I look at sales as I'm literally solving a problem for my client and making their life easier. That's all I'm doing. You know, they, they came to me for this and this is what I'm, I'm going to, like, that's why I want to hang it up on their wall because that's yet another problem that they, so all this time this client is spending at the frame shop, that's, I feel like that's what we should be doing. Like, that's our job. And that's why back in the day, photo studios used to have, they just did it all in-house. They, right. you know, but that was before metal prints and, you know, acrylics and all the fun things we can do now. But right. uh, that's when it was like, framing was like the only option, you know. But I, <laughs> I, 
absolutely feel like, yeah, that's so much time. And then she has to deal with all that and she's busy and she's got the kids running around. Like, I, no, like that's what I'll do. I'll go do all that. And then I just build it into my price a little bit so that I have that time covered. Um, and again, when you work with a client, with a framer enough, like the one I've been working with, it's like, now I just go in and I'm like, you just pick it. Cause I mean, he's always spot on. So like now it's like, I upload my file from my computer and then I go pick it up. <laughs> I don't, I'm not even part of the process anymore. You know, I love it. You know? So I think, yeah, I think that's just yet another one of those things where we can just take that off there to a do list and do it ourselves. And I, and like you said, the, the key to starting that is to go do it ourselves. When I worked in the frame shop, so many of the people who would come in, they would come to the counter and say, I've got this size print. Can you just show me where this size frame is? I'm like, sure, I can do that. Not a problem. You know, measure out the print. Oh, it's this strange size. <laughs> well, by 18, we actually don't carry frames in that size. Right. It's not standard. <laughs> uh, oh, what do you mean it's not standard? Well, so funny enough, things that are proportioned like an eight by 10, that is the more standard proportion in ready-made frame sizes. We are starting to see more of the longer, narrower proportion frames like 12 by 16s and, and things like that, but they're, they're still in the minority. Yeah. Um, and they tend to be the one inch black. Super standard, like you know. nothing cool. Right. <laughs> yeah, not, not a lot of not a lot of options there. So if your customer wants, you know, something that is a little bit more attuned to the style of their home or you know, something that's not just a plain, flat, solid color, you know, they, they might not have as many options. Whereas, you know, you go you walk down the eleven by fourteen aisle at Michaels and you've got 57 different styles, you know? <laughs> yeah, like all the choices you could ever imagine. But, yeah. <laughs> and again, it gets back to like, I would never sell anything if I wasn't finishing the product. There's no way I would sell anything other than an 8x10, 11 by 14 16 by 20 Like, whereas, whereas I do shoot full frame, so my work really resonates with an 16 by 24 mm -hmm. um, But then, but I feel like at that size, that's where I need to be framing it and canvassing it and meddling it, whatever, like I, I would rather. For me personally, because, um, you know, my clients, I serve such a wide geographical area. It's really hard for me to service my clients as fully as you do. So a lot of what I do is, um, I make referrals for like, this is a great place to go and, you know, finish out where you can get it for and things like that. Um, and so I sell prints, I sell canvases, and I do, I do the gallery wrap so that the gallery wrap canvas is, is a finished product. Yeah, it's ready to go. Yeah, exactly. They can choose to frame it if they want to, but if, you know, if they opt not to, it looks great on the wall as it is. Um, you know, but then my choice in, in selling things where they would still have to go and, and do the work themselves for finding framing, because again, I have seen in my time that framing is very personal. <laughs> you know, people want to put their stylistic spin on it as well. Um, everything I do is is a very standard size. You know, five by seven, eight by ten, eleven by fourteen, sixteen by twenty, twenty four by thirty six. Right. You know, I'm not doing the things that I know that there are more limited options, even though they are becoming more standard. Mm -hmm. One day, when full frame proportion frames become more Plethorist? Sure, I'll stop cropping all of my images. <laughs> I would love to give those extra pixels out, no. but <laughs> that's not the that's not the frame reality we live in. <laughs> yeah. So, do you you ship prints to your clients then, and then let them frame them? Is that you're not framing them and sending them out other than canvas? Yeah, I I just do I just do the prints, and I'm always happy to make a recommendation for a framer. I will do the research about you know who's good in the area if they want a recommendation. Okay, so that's a, that would be a next question then. Like if you're a photographer who doesn't have the background you have, like I I have, for me being a photo finisher, I have all that color theory knowledge that I bring to the table that other photographers don't have. What is you bringing all this uh, finishing knowledge to the table? If I was a brand new photographer just going and looking for a framer or getting something framed, like, do you have any, like, basic stuff that you can 
say about how to find how to know whether it's a good um, frame shop or not? So, I mean, you. I usually just call them up and I ask them, like you know, what are what? How did how do they frame things? You know, are they archival? What is what is their process in framing things? Um, if they say, oh, we like to dry mount a lot of things. Mm -mm. Okay. No, <laughs> because if they're dry mounting everything, that means that they don't care about preservation. Um, and dry mounting is actually what the the process is that your prints are getting mounted to the right. You're attaching it. Print is, that's dry mounting, and and that's fine. But that's what they're doing to mount the prints. But you know, if somebody comes with uh, an original piece of artwork on paper and they dry mount it, like, oh my god. <laughs> So, you know, like, so, framers would really do that then, like... If they don't care about it, you know, so so that's one of the things I, I ask about is, you know, what is your process? Most framers, they don't do that, you know, dry mounting is pretty much reserved for, like, posters and, and stuff like that. Um, most framers are like, oh, we'll use, like, a linen hinge mount, things like that. My personal favorite hinging tape is Filmoplast P90, it's really easy. Um, but you don't have to ask them that specific question. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. for all of you photographers who I know are thinking about matting yourself, my jam is Filmoplast P90. There you go. <laughs> it's a really, it's a really great tape. Linen tape is is for like really big, heavier things. Um, but Filmoplast P90 is perfect for photo prints. Do you prefer? I mean, I guess they're all. When you get something matted and framed at a shop, they're probably doing a hinge mat, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're not taping the photo to the mat opening. So that's why I kind of wanted to open this frame up, but oh, but you. like the way that usually it happens is you have um, you have your foam core backing, and if they're doing things archivally, everything should be acid free. So their foam core should have an acid free paper layer and then their mat board should all be acid free mat board um and that's what that's going to do everything being acid free means that you're not going to get like that yellow discoloring that seeps onto the edge of your print i like to hinge uh the photo to the backer board and then i use an atg tape to apply the mat to the backer board so the photo is loose and not attached to the mat because sometimes what will happen is you want to remove the mat um, and change it out in the future. And then you can just leave the photo on the backer board. You don't have to remove that at all. Sometimes yeah. I'll use a photo corner um, on the bottom corners just to give it a little bit of extra support depending on how big it is. But usually if it's a small print, the hinge at the top is fine. And basically it's just like a T that you put on the top corner of each photo that you then sort of do the same thing to the, the mat board. I, that wasn't a very good illustration, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it, basically once it's all together, it makes an H, so it's like sticky to the back of the photo and then sticky to the front of the backer board. Right, 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 right. Okay, I get it, yeah. But, and that's with your custom framing. If you are doing it just to the mat, it would be the same thing, but it's sticky to the back of the photo and then sticky to the back of the mat board. Yeah, like if you bought a ready-made frame, like a 16 by 20 that comes with an opening for an eight by 10 or whatever. Yeah. Most people just, I think, would attach it to the... Yeah, they, yeah, in that case, you would attach it to the mat. Right, yeah, 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 okay, cool. Part of the, part of the purpose of a mat in a frame is to keep the glass from touching the picture. From touching yeah, I wish I had an example of this. So depending on humidity conditions, and time will do this no matter what. If you give it enough time, if your photo is pressed right up against the glass, your photo will fuse to the glass, and then you'll try to remove it, and your ink and paper is stuck to the glass. So any photo that's pressed up against glass, given enough time, depending on what the conditions are, it will happen to it. If the humidity conditions are right, I thought it was as little as five years, but one of the commenters said that it happened to her in two. I couldn't believe that. I've never, like, I lived in Florida. 
I, I, was, I was gonna say, where are you living that this happened so quickly, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> you know, I had people who would bring me their photos that that happened to because they had it in their steamy shower bathroom in Florida. And I was like, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, like I don't ever put a photo in a bathroom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the mat, you know, that's its purpose is to help keep the print away from the glass. And when you have a bigger print, you have to have a wider mat or sometimes you have to have a double mat because when your print takes up a certain area, the center is going to be touching the glass after a certain point. So that's why I just really don't recommend doing prints over 16 by 20 because a 16 by 20 print really should have a double mat. You know, you should have two mats on top of each other because it needs that little bit of extra thing. Um, because the center is going to be touching the glass. And that's just kind of the physics of the way the stuff bows in the middle. If you're going to have a print that's bigger than 16 by 20, then you have to build structure. And one of your mats has to be floating and creating even more space okay. between the print and the glass. So you'll take, like, you'll have your bottom mat that the print is directly behind, and then you'll put, like, a piece of foam for it in between your bottom mat and your top mat so that and it's beautiful. It gives that beautiful floating shadow box look. Like it's gorgeous, but it's more expensive. So I didn't, like, I didn't realize that was more of a structural thing. Yeah, it's it's you know, and we do it a lot as framers. We do it for um, chalk pastels. You know, that's something that we do because otherwise the static cling of the glass will pull the chalk away from the pastel, even if it has spray fix on it. That's crazy. That's why we reverse bevel on chalk pastels as well, because otherwise the chalk falls and leaves color all over the bevel of the mat. Yeah. So. All these things. <laughs> <laughs> you had no idea we were magicians. <laughs> I know. Yeah, and it's funny because, I mean, I have, like, a cursory knowledge just from, like, going to art school, you know, having to cut mats and, like, frame them and whatever, but but there's so, there's so much, but like any profession where people, you know, people here on the wedding guitar room, then they think, oh, good, you just go to parties all the time and take pictures. And I'm just like, yeah, like 20 yeah. days, 20 days a year. Like <laughs> the rest of the time, the rest of the time I'm standing right here, you know, like alone in my office, <laughs> you know, like twiddling my thumbs. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, my, my website, you know, <laughs> Right, just waiting for the next drunk person to come in front of my camera, like, <laughs> yeah, so it's the same sort of stuff, it's like, once you, like, peel behind the layer, there's just this whole world, which is why it's a freaking profession, right, so, <laughs> wow, so that's amazing, so my thing is, like, clients are either a canvas kind of a person, or a framed person, or, like, metal print person, like, I find that, that their personalities actually dictate I mean, some, to some degree, I, I pick it based on the photo, but I find that, like, people who want traditional framing are just, like, they, that's a different kind of personality as far as my clients. So if they wanted, like, a 20 by 30 or some giant print, that's really, like, not my problem. It's where, that's where the framer, I have to really trust my framer to do it right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and, and you should talk to your framer about, you know, making sure that it's being done in a way that's going to protect it. And you know, talk to them about like, hey, just want to make sure that this is going to last and stand the test of time. Because, you know, most, I would say that furniture kind of gets changed out like every five years. And then the framing usually gets changed out with every two furniture years. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You so know, a lot of, a lot of, that was the feedback that I would get from a lot of the clients that would come in like, oh, I had this framed about 10 years ago and we've changed the furniture like two or three times since then. And I just really want it to be updated with this, you know, and make it look like it goes with the furniture this time. <laughs> Unlike my mom, and this is crazy. My mom is an interior decorator and she still has all of our family pictures framed the way that they were framed in the 80s. I don't understand it. And the 80s was like a very special decade of bad taste for everything. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's like, is it all gold? And I mean, no, it's not all gold. It's like these weird, like, rounded wood frames. And, and actually, they are mounted prints that have a coating, and they're just in the frame. Okay. 
Um, and so they were treated kind of like a canvas. Um, and they were framed as though they were a canvas. Yeah. Um, I, I actually have one in my, in my bag hiding because yeah. <laughs> true to the eighties, I have terrible eighties hair in it. Yeah. For worse. a part of the world. <laughs> worse clothes, worse hair, worse everything. <laughs> And yet we have 80s themed parties. I know. And and like, yeah. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. I see I see the fashions and I'm just like, it was bad the first time. Like I was very aware how bad it was the first time around. And don't please don't bring it back. It looks terrible on you. <laughs> no. But you know, so that's the thing. People, um, you know, they your framing kind of stays even as your house changes. Yeah. Um, so you're right that it is kind of stylistic choices um and and that's kind of the benefit of having it done right the first time is because it's it's going to last longer than some of the other things that are in your home even if you decide to redo it later down the line because usually the reason somebody decides to redo it is aesthetic not because something is wrong with it unless it was botched you know i mean i know sometimes it's hard to get out of like jargon speak of like because you worked in a frame shop but is there any like other tip of like how people can talk to their framer or um, I mean because I guess I would have assumed that everybody was doing archival stuff so that's actually good to know that that you really have to be that dumbed down with your framer of like making sure they're not dry mounting and that it's all archival uh, I guess I would have thought they all were at this point but well it's hard because um, sometimes I mean it's a conversation that you have with your client too because um, you know, if your client is the one going to your framer, you know, they're going to be the ones talking to your framer about it. Um, you know, it was so long ago that I worked at our frame shop. I can't quite remember. I think dry mounting was more expensive at our frame shop than, than doing a regular mount. But other frame shops, they might charge differently for it. So, you know, it's important to talk to your client about why dry mounting is a permanent process. Once it's affixed, you can't have it undone. It's done, right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So that's the way it is forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So when you are framing something archivally, the idea is that whatever you're doing in the framing process, you're able to undo it and get the print or, or whatever the art object is that you're framing is going to be able to be returned to the client in as original a state as possible. So in the hinge tape, example we were talking about, especially if you're using something like Film Class P90, the only thing that's going to be different about your print when you get it back is there's going to be a very thin acid-free paper tape on the back of your print. If you're dry mounting it, that means that your print now is on a piece of foam core. It's important to talk to your client about the, the differences between, you know, what archival framing is for the protection and longevity of their, their print and if they choose to go to a framer asking about things being asset free. Um, ready-made options, if your client decides to go that route because it is more affordable, ready-made options often are not archival. The, the ready-made mats that you get in frames or that you can buy separately to put in your own frame, they often are not acid free. Some of them are, and if they are, they will say it. Right. Um, and then, um, you know, the, the backer boards, like the little masonite or cardboard backer boards, those are not acid free. You know, usually in archival framing, we actually line the wooden frame with an acid free border tape. Oh. So like anything from the wood is not seeping in and, and getting in there. Like, you know, when you're an archivist. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Cause <laughs> even when you look at the frame, like I've taken apart, you know, old frames of photos were in or whatever, and there's a line on the glass from the wood um yeah so I, I wouldn't I never thought of taping that off or yeah whatever. yeah when you're when you're an archivist you do a lot you so. do all the things you can do to make it better <laughs> yeah. that's, how, that's how I feel like my passion is wedding albums and so that's how I feel about wedding albums like I am super picky about how they put together and the glue they use and whether they lay flat and how they're sewn like that's where I get really nerdy because most of what wedding photographers are putting out now are not really archival mm -hmm. uh, by any stretch of the imagination. So 
it, like that's where I get really nerdy is with the album construction. Like, right. so it's the same sort of thing. It's like knowing what to look for, uh, knowing what to ask and digging just a little bit under the surface with the right questions to make sure that you're making the right decision for your client. Because right. with uh, wedding albums, it's moisture content. So um, like you can have the backing board can warp over time and the pages can warp over time. And right. so I've done an interview that's on my YouTube with my favorite album manufacturer and we went into all that stuff, uh, which was fun. It's fun to like, but yeah, it's crazy. It's like, it's not just, and that again, it just gets back to like, if I'm a professional photographer, then I need to act like a professional and I need to take care of this for my client mm -hmm. because they don't know. And then they're busy. Like they're a ready made frame is like what's there. So it's fine. <laughs> you know, like, but even, even like canvases, I've had, uh, it's another reason I get in a fight about the digitals all the time, is like I've had clients where I've seen the canvases they're ordering, and they're like not even stapled on crooked and put crooked. Like I've gone over, like recently in December this year, I went over to one of my best clients, her mom's house, and I offered, I was like, it was one of those things that they had ordered all these photos uh, from cell phones and whatever, to like do a collage wall for their mom for Christmas. And this was three years ago and they never hung it up. So, I mean, this is one of my best, this is like one of my very best clients. So I'm like, please let me go and hang it up. Cause it'll net, it's like three years later, they weren't even my photos, but please let me do it. And so I went to hang it up, but it was impossible. I kept thinking like, why are these not level? The level says it's level. Well, it turns out like none of them were stapled on to the board even correctly. Um, I mean, the, the quality was all over the place. The, there's no finishing to it. Like some of them didn't have hanging hardware and I had to bring that up. And like, but the great thing was, is that I do all that for that client. So she was just like, this is why we pay you to do it. You know, like she, she definitely is just like a hundred percent of like what she knows, like, you know, the value of every life. single photo in her house is mine. So <laughs> I call it the McKay's photography showroom because it's every single photo in that house is mine. <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> even, even in small frames on bookshelves are all my photos. So, but anyway, going over to her mom's, like the canvases were thinner. Like they were just like, you know, the half inch um, wood frame and then they weren't finished on the back and there was crooked and it was good. I mean, I, I made it work. <laughs> And it's yeah. like, you know, and, and at the end of the day, it's like now her mom can enjoy these photos. And it's like another thing taken off her list of things to do. And like now it's like this beautiful home with all this person. So like it bothers me that they're not level, but in the end, her mom's just happy they're up, you know? Right. But it gets back to, you know, that's like the problems that your clients are going to have. Like if they ever get around to hanging these things up, they're dealing with this stuff. Whereas for us as photographers, that's the fun of the job. That's, I love solving that kind of stuff for them and doing it for them. I want them to enjoy photos because then they want more photos. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, I never ever have my uh, clients frame a canvas or even a metal print. Like what would you, like what is your, what do you, do you have any thoughts on that? Or do you think it's just personal preference or? It's personal preference. Um, I have had people, when I worked at the frame shop, bring me the gallery wrap canvas, and I was like, are you sure you want to frame this? And they're like, yeah. Here's the difficulty there. Um, a lot of the gallery wrap canvas, so metal prints, not that big of a deal. They're not that thick. They can go in most frames, and not a problem. Um, you know, it's kind of the same as mounting a photo print, but because they're metal prints, they usually have some sort of finish, so you don't really need to worry about glass. You treat it like a canvas, but it's not as thick as right. With the gallery wrap, you know, mine, the thinnest they come in is like an inch and a half, you yeah. know, so they're, they're pretty thick. Yeah. Um, so you're looking at needing a shadow box frame, um, which means you either don't go with a shadow box frame, and that means that your frame is not as deep as your canvas and so you're still seeing some of the edge of the canvas if they don't put a backer paper on it or they put a backer paper on it and you're seeing some of the edge of the backer paper when you're like looking like if you ever are at that position where you're looking down the wall and then yeah, you see the side of it yeah or you got a shadow box frame and it, it covers it nicely but you know shadow box frames you usually don't have as many options for framing yeah, um, the frame itself is just deeper, so the canvas sits in it. That's what you're saying. Yeah. So if you have a frame that you love and it's not deep enough, mm -hmm. they have this thing. It's like a frame that you put to make it a shadow box. It's like a, 
like an extension tube or something like yeah kind of so it's like a back frame that you put the other frame on top of and it would turn it into a shadow box frame i can't believe i forgot the name of it it's like you know, right it'll, yeah, it'll, that'll come to you, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, tomorrow. Yeah, so that makes sense. But I mean, I, I would think like something like that, you might not have a frame already. Not to get into like a sales tactic, because I actually, this was a total accident, but this one client that I knew, she was very traditional. Um, so I, I don't remember why she saw the different things. Maybe it was like during my holiday print sale or something. Anyway, she's like, what's metal? And I'm like, oh, you know, that's just like what modern people do. Like, I just was kind of dismissive. Like, it's like this trendy, you know, it's kind of new. It's trendy. like not many people have it. Like, and I, I just assumed she was a straight up framer. Per, you know, like, and I've been doing this a really long time. So I'm pretty good about picking that stuff out. And like, you know, and, and, but I think it, what it did is it actually totally piqued her interest. And she's like, well, if no one else even knows about it and thinks it's cool and like I want to have like I think that's what happened which I didn't mean it to be that way as like a sales tactic but right. um, I think she's the kind of person that you know she dresses very well she's very trendy in her way of like everything so right. so it may it actually makes sense that she was like well if no one else has it then I want that you know because like, I think I even said like oh photographers don't even know it exists you know like it's just something I do for some do. You know, like yeah yeah but I but now her whole living room is all these metal prints that I've now made for her like really like like they remodeled their living room so that they could put this one metal print up like and I'm just like wow. like as a photographer and as an artist I'm just like yeah. like I love that <laughs> like the ego of being a creative is great because it's like it's like when you said like being a painter or you know that like you want it to me like if I do it right it gives me that same feeling like right. you know it wasn't just a wedding photo that's like you know it was a cool photo I did of you know of the location and the well, wedding. In one of your other videos I thought it was so cool you were talking about how a couple did like a huge metal print with the post as their headboard and it was yeah. like that's an awesome idea. Totally. I want to do that. <laughs> I know I want every like it's so cool and actually I did that I did one I didn't do it as a headboard but I did one similar to that in my bedroom when I remodeled it um because I was reading up on like feng shui and stuff and they were just saying like not to have any actual plants in your bedroom and I've always had plants in every room because they clean the air so I I was like okay that's weird so but I wanted a way to have a plant in my room so I took a fun wedding flowers like beautiful bouquet that like were me you know it wasn't very, really, it wasn't very wedding-y, and I made a huge, and the bokeh in the background was like the right, you know, beautiful colors and stuff, and so I made a big, and that way I have like flowers in my bedroom that aren't living, like, right, and, and then it's just this huge pop of color, and it's actually almost big enough for the headboard, but yeah, it was fun doing that one for my client, because on metal, it's sort of masculine, it's modern, it's like, with the posts, I mean, it's all, you know, it, is, it works right. really good for this, and like, it's really fun, like, and that's what is fun about being a photographer is like get, thinking outside the box and like doing these kind of projects. Like it's so much fun for me. Like this is where, again, where the digital is. I'm just like, but you as a photographer are missing out on so much. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, I feel like it's like when you're finally in a great relationship, you for, you know, you realize how bad other ones were. Like, I feel that's how like delivering a wedding album is like, like you don't, it's again, it's not finished. And um, and it's this, this sense of joy and pride and um, that you just can't even explain like how that feels to like see your artwork perfectly curated, perfectly presented, beautifully color corrected, telling us a gorgeous story. Like, like it breaks my heart to have to give that wedding album to the couple. Like it literally, <laughs> it literally breaks my heart because it's like, Maybe. <laughs> yeah, and it's like two years of my life too, you know, like, yeah. and, I, and by then I'm friends with them and like, you know, like it just literally feels like I'm giving away a puppy. <laughs> so I, I don't feel that way when I, when I give an album, I'm just like, I, I feel so complete, you know, and super. Yeah. I had seven years of art school. So like attachment to my work was just beaten out of me yeah <laughs> you know yes, that is very true that does happen but I th and I think that's one of the reasons that the album specifically is why it's so rewarding for me because, <laughs> because everything else it's like you know like that you know 
people order prints and I'm just like, yeah, it's not the print I would have ordered for my wedding or what, you know, whatever. Like I definitely have that for other things, but with the album, especially if it was a wedding that I love, like where I know I nailed it all, like A to Z, beginning and end, you know, those are the ones that's like, you know, <laughs> I'll look through it. Yeah, like, I'm just always so pleased to give it to them. I'm like, go out into the world. Enjoy it. it. Purpose. <laughs> and, and that's how I feel about my wall art. I definitely feel that way. That's why I like hanging up, because then I get to stand back and be like, now they get to enjoy it for the rest of their lives. Like, their kids get to grow up with all these cool photos on the wall. Like, that to me is like, yeah, I definitely am more happy about that. But, and you're right, with the album and with wall art, the sense of completion, of completing a task, is very, that is a huge part of it, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And that's part of the reason, that's part of the reason I harass my clients that do have the files. Um, you know, sometimes they just buy them or whatever, but uh, that's why I harass them because I'm like, okay, what have you done with them? <laughs> like, right. I kind of troll them a little, like, okay, right, I'm going to bother you until you put an album together and I know you're never going to do it, so make sure you call me when you're ready, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, and even even with uh, their, you know, if they have the photos and they want to do their own stuff on the wall, they still do, like, it's just four by sixes, put in a little frame that they got, you know, at Michael's. They, like that's the irony is they they don't even do cool projects they don't even because they're not thinking they don't know how to think about that like and even photographers have a hard time brainstorming like the headboard was like a totally cool project I think that's I think that's part of why so many photographers don't really do like what you do with sort of full service start to finish is because we unless you've really had that training like I've had where you have been drilled to think about presentation of your work start to finish. Yeah. Um, you know, so much of our exposure about how images should be presented to you is contrived. Um, you know, we have a very set marketing scheme that's put to us by, you know, our media of how images should be presented. And so, you know, it, it's a false narrative of limited options, you know, because and actually, I'm looking at a perfect example behind you. You know, we were talking about white frame or white matte black frame. Yeah. This is what so many photographers think that framing is supposed to be. And what I agree, like until I found like a good framer, I didn't know either, you know, and then and a lot of it with the, you know, we were just what we were talking about is the, you know, white matte with the black frame um, is like, but because it's part of it, it's like it'll go with any decor. It's classic, like whatever. Right. Right. So it's easy. It's like a that's like an easy entryway into it. But what's been fun for me working with like an actual framer and someone who does it all the time is that there's all these really cool colors of mats that I would never think to do. Yeah, like look how fun that is. So I don't know if you can actually see it. I actually got like a super thin pink line to echo the frame. So this is actually my hey, I'm a super fancy framer. I like took this test and I did all these, you know, special techniques. Love it. Learnings. Um, Love so it. it <laughs> that I you might as well have it like pink and showy if you're gonna. <laughs> yeah, well, so this is my personality. This, this top mat is actually like this super lustry black and then like there's yeah. this pebble gray and there's the pink. And then the, you know, shiny pink frame. And actually the glass that's in here is like a super non-glary glass. Of course, I'm right next to a window, so you can see yeah. it because I'm so right. close to it. But like, you know, yeah. out in the regular world of the room, it's not yeah. like that. That's the, only, that's the only problem with the metal prints. Like, I love selling metal prints. So like, <laughs> so, like, photographing them, it's just like, ah, like, why am I selling these cool things that I'm having, like, that I'm having a hard time photographing? You know, like, there's one project I did where, yeah, it's like the whole thing was a window, and they did two metal prints. It was like a dining room with a nook, and it's just like a bank of windows, because they have this gorgeous view, but then it's the two metal prints. It's like, I don't care how many lights I bring in and soft boxes, like, there's no way to not have that window glare yeah, no. on these metal prints. It's like, that's where, I, that's where I just don't even try. I'm like, I'm just going to use my cell phone. and. Yeah. Like, generally, here's what it looks like, <laughs> But yeah, so these, the ones that are here in my office, this was like a big thing when I remodeled my office like two or three years ago, I had to paint it. But I love these because they're, they're woodcuts that my aunt, who's passed away, did, and they're amazing. Um, and they were like the last big art thing she did before she got breast cancer and couldn't do it anymore. Um, so it's like an emotional thing too, like being an artist your whole life and then all of a sudden not being able to use your right arm. Right. 
right. really sucks. And so, and they're gorgeous. And she has so many of these woodcuts and they're just amazing. And um, these are all specifically from her uh, memories of her trip from Africa. And I was, when I was remodeling the office, I was saving, planning to go to Africa. So it was a good motivator. I have one right here. It's a good motivator, of, like work, don't be on Facebook, like make right. money for, make money for Africa, like stay focused, like, <laughs> You know, but but yeah, they, and uh, and part of the reason that I framed them the way they did is just my my grandmother had given me a couple of them, and she'd already framed them. So I had I had ones that weren't mad that are framed, and so I just made them all match because then it's right. easy, you know. But I agree, like so having a real framer and like matter, like 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 he could just like grab these like. I bring in a photo, any photo, and he just grabbed like three f mats, throw them down, and it was like boom, amazing, totally cool, super creative. Yeah. And like, he's picking up quickly all these color, and it gets back to like kind of what we do and we just take for granted, right? Like, I don't know, I feel like I take for yeah. granted that my brain just works this way and that's how I'm a photographer. Like that, I, that's just how like, I see things. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, well, and that was, that was the thing, you know, explaining to, to some of the people on the frame, you know, mats come in different colors. Why would you use different colors? And it's like, well, you know, if you have this subtle color, like a teal, in the picture that's really subtle, you might use that as, as like that under map, the way that I had that pink in there. And, and that'll bring that out of the photo. But then also your, your mat is kind of like a bridge between your image and the frame, but then also you're, you're framing the piece and you create, you know, your image, your mat and your frame, it creates one whole art piece, you know, yeah. it's a piece of art piece. Totally. And then, you're using your mat and your frame to maybe tie your image into your room because a lot of people will have maybe a more traditionally decorated room, but then their image, everything, you know, they might look really modern in their image. And so, you know, it's, it's a way to sort of tie all of it together. So as a framer, that was one of the things that we always ask, you know, what is the decor in your house like? Because we might throw down something really contemporary like this yeah. and that's not going to go in your house it's going to stick out like a sore thumb i and have i have a piece, frame yeah. the image but I have, I have a piece like that that i had framed through my framer and he did a great job but then i got but then i've always had a hard time figuring out where it's going to go in my house yeah you know and so it's important you know a good framer asks all those questions and you know we we consider what is your decor like what does the image look like how can we find the marriage of all of it yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. And so I, on that note, yeah, like, why I don't do the framing for customers is because it's so, it's yeah. so personal, you know, and, and I say, go to your framer, talk to them, make sure that they're doing it right. This is what you should think about. And it's like, if you want to go the ready made route, that's fine. These are the pros and cons of each method. Right. And then, so what, what could you give them, uh, as far as another last little tip to leave off of is, you know, everyone's always like lurking behind them about like, what's the cost, you know? So what, is there anything about working in a frame shop that you're just like, yeah, that 90% of people don't need that. And it's an upsell. That's like, you know, like you go to buy a car and they want to sell you the extra clear coat or whatever. Like, is there anything like that with, with framing that, you know, that they just don't need, or most people don't need that they're spending too much money on or, or have you seen clients bring stuff in and you're like, why are you spending so much money to get this frame? Like, do you have any price saving sort of tidbits? Frames will have like ready-made open back frames. And if you find one that you like and you can get your piece to work in it, but like maybe you need to actually do the custom matting and the custom mounting, you know, see if you can find a ready-made open back frame and get them to, you know, do like a hybrid. Um, because that, that'll save you a little bit of money there. One thing I did want to touch on, um, you know, a lot of people want to go with a big print, you know, instead of buying the big canvas from their photographer because they think it'll be more affordable, you know, because when we sell a large canvas, that number can, can be a little scary. Um, but... I think what a lot of clients don't really realize is that when it's all said and done, you know, once they take that print to go and, and deal with it and get it framed, 
they're going to be spending just as much, if not more, to, to have it framed, you know, than as if they have just bought the canvas. I agree. Yeah, that's that's the stuff people don't think about because they're splitting up the cost. They're buying the print from me and then having it framed, and they're never really putting the two together. Yeah, I actually, I myself am guilty. I have, and I mean, I didn't actually have a choice. I have a large print that I got from an artist, um, and it's not framed. It's huge. It's like, it's huge um <laughs> and it's not framed it's it's rolled and it's in storage and i love it and every now and again i take it out and i look at it but it's not framed a i don't know where i'm gonna put it but <laughs> b it's gonna be astronomical for me to frame it <laughs> right you know? well, that, that just reminds me of like sort of like an old, like a movie that becomes like you know eventually someone finds this and they want you know but it's your like secret little thing that you go and unroll and look at and like at the closet you know like in the closet <laughs> or something. <laughs> oh, I mean, tales of an art collector. I uh, we actually, as I was going through and finding all these things, I actually found an art piece that my boyfriend and I have been talking about. Like, where's that piece that we bought at that show? I don't even remember what it looks like. You know, this is tales of an art collector. We have pieces that are in storage that you know because we don't have a place to put it. You know. Yeah, I know. With mine, mine are all in my attic. I have like portfolio boxes in the attic and. Some of them are matted and they're just all in this box, but I turned my hallway and uh, in my house into like a gallery. So, yeah. I, so especially because I'm working with my own images, I put all other artists because I, you know, I try to like buy stuff from each friend I have and like whatever. And so it's nice to, and that's one of the reasons I have my aunt's woodcuts in here. It's because they're not my work. Like that's, right. it's a very conscious choice of like, I love that they're black and white. I love how visual, like they're very graphic. Uh, the one you can see isn't, but. These other ones are just really, really great use of negative space. Right. Uh, and it's a motivator for as an artist, as a creative, like, you know, like I'm doing weddings, but I still want to do cool stuff. So, uh, but the hallway is the same thing. It's like, a, you know, walk down that hallway a million times a day and it's just like everyone else's creativity in my face and not my creativity in my face. Yeah. Like, you can't see, I posted a picture of it, I think in the rising tide, but uh, my inspiration above my desk, I have all of these postcards and photos and thank you cards from, uh, and, and drawings and original artworks that artists and, and collectors have given me um, from my time in the galleries. And Love it. That's yeah. My motivator. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As a visual person, you know, like, yeah, I mean, oh, I just love it. Like, actually, I can show you this one because this one is, this one is my favorite. That's why it's right next to my desk. But, oh, and that's, um, it's a woodcut, you said, right? Yeah, it's a woodcut and um, an elephant. I love it. It's like, it's really nice. Her signature and everything. And it's the first one. It's a one out of 10. So, and it's like the best one. <laughs> <laughs> Or the, or the whatever, you know, like, yeah. but it's nice to just have, like, yeah, I love having different inspiration as an artist and creative, and, and this is, I think, what people don't realize when they're hiring a photographer, right, like, they don't remember that, like, this is what we do, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. we, we have this whole wealth of stuff, like, one of the things that's really, really fun about working with the client I talked about earlier about hanging her mom's canvas, so one of the things that's been great about working with a client like her is that that she listens to what I have to say, and they have their opinions, but like, obviously, like my opinion usually has more weight, but so we've done this big um, living wall, and I just did canvas, because with that kind of stuff, 20 years from now, I want them to be able to, like, it's really hard to match a frame, right, so right. I, with this, like, um, family wall that she built, um, started it with the wedding photos, and they knew they were going to have kids right away, so like, I helped her plan it out, and, um, you know, it's just, it's really fun to like work on projects long term with a client like that because as I'm photographing the next baby, like we're making, we, we know where it's going on the wall already. I already know it needs a face this way or that way. Like it actually helps me photograph the, the session because I know what we're doing with the photos. Um, and it's fun. And what's cool is that now she understands that. So now like she can communicate to me the same way of like, oh wait, well you said it needs to be facing this way or whatever, you know, like right. it's really kind of fun. And I, um, and she's great as like for decor and stuff. She's amazing. And actually one of the motivators for me painting my office was like, you know, when you're around somebody who has like a really nice house and like it's, everything's just so, it's kind of like, oh, I want that, you know? <laughs> but what I like is that I've sort of taught her how to communicate about images, you know? And like now, like she, she would never fight me now on like, whether something needs to be black and white or color like she now she knows I've given her that vocabulary 
Right. Uh, and it's so much fun. Like, it's so much fun when you can get that relationship with your client and work long term with them. And, and it's the same as with having a framer, right? Like, right. Where you just knows like you and your style and how you work and and yeah, yeah. It's like the woman, like I said, the woman who came every two weeks and brought me the pie, like yeah, she she didn't talk to me about what we were setting up. She was talking to me about whatever had happened with each other for the last two weeks, and I'm just laying out what I think is going to look good. I yeah. set up a different arrangement on all four corners, and then she would be like, this is the one. <laughs> all right, you got it. <laughs> yeah, and it just makes it, the whole process so much easier, right? Like, yeah, I mean, that client, she just texts me now, like, you know, you're, here's your guy, like, I used to meet, they live here, I could meet her in person and do the whole reveal and whatever, but because we done this so many times yeah again because i'm shooting for the rooms and for the house like that's huge <laughs> like i'm not over i don't need to overshoot because like right. i know ex we all know exactly what i just have to get the photo to take we just need the baby to be born so i can take the photo that's going on the wall like, like <laughs> that's actually the hardest part you know so but it's so, much, it's so much fun because i you know now i just send it to the web gallery which normally i would never send a portrait client a web gallery and then we just text each other back and forth as she's going through it. And right. I'm like, and I'm like, here, I think this number for the, like, I already know. I'm like, this is the photo I think is perfect for this and this. And, this. and then like we give her husband, you know, the husband obviously has a say and he usually, be, he gets veto power, but um, right. he's actually learned over the years to like, just trust us. <laughs> like, <laughs> the one photo that was like too close and too big and like, he, he like, then he gets it because he wasn't there when I explained it to her. Right. So uh, but now, like, because of that situation, like, he totally gets it now, like, what we're talking about <laughs> and stuff. And he's always welcome to be there. He just, he's one of those people who has a really busy job, so it's just easier, you know. <laughs> right, right. But I love that, I love that dynamic, and that's why I wanted to get on video with you versus, like, just talking about it in the chat room on Facebook. It's just, it's more tangible, it's more, you can, I just feel like you can really understand it, and then showing these examples right you know it's just uh it's great and i mean i would say like one thing i do like about having these mounted prints is that these have been great over the years for showing clients photos without having a bent um, yeah you know like like they for like we forget that they don't know photographic printing fine art printing canvas right. metal like they don't know what that means right so I, I do like to bring samples over but this makes it just last longer like right so I mean I wouldn't frame this. It's just for a sample, but um, but it's nice to you know it's nice to have because it's more durable for that right. for that sort of thing. But so anyway, I'm really glad that you educated me on not actually doing this if the client's going to frame it. Yeah, well, so the thing about doing the mounted print like that, you can frame it, but probably they're going to have to go with a custom frame option because to keep the print away from the glass, if they don't. If they don't opt to mat it, it needs a spacer, which is basically a thin piece of plastic that goes all the way around the edge. You know how the frame has that little rabbit? Yeah. It goes in there between the glass and the print, and then, you know, that's thick. You know, that creates even more thickness inside the frame, right. um, which ready-made frames really don't have. Um, if they decide that they want to mat it, you know, then the framer has to use... A, a foam core to build up the a border around that mounted um, print to support the mat, you know, yeah. otherwise it's going to bend back, you know, it's going to bend backwards. And yeah. A, that would look terrible and B, the physics of that is not ideal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's really the piece of it is I, I wasn't, I was always thinking like it saves them money. Like, Oh, you could just put it on an easel. You could put it on a bookshelf. Like you don't have to frame it, I guess is my, my, it was like a cheater way of finishing it is what I was thinking originally. Um, but now I, the piece of it that I really got out of this is I just didn't, I wasn't thinking through the print against the glass piece. It's like, I, I really wasn't thinking right. about it at all. I was thinking like, Oh, just put it in a ready-made frame. And, and this is my way of ensuring you're not going to ruin it on the way to the framer. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> well, you know, that's, so that's, that's good to know. Like Suggesting to people like if you're gonna go ahead and mount it, I I mean I think WHCC is uh, 
No, WHCC is my lab. I don't think that. I know that. <laughs> um, I think they do it, it's, you know, for small prints, it's, it's less than a dollar for them to put the protective coating on it, you know, so it, as the print gets bigger, obviously that, that's a little more expensive. But, you know, it's, it's such a minimal extra cost if you're going to do a mounted print to have the protective coating put on just do it and then the piece becomes like canvas you don't have to worry about doing glass i think it's a nicer look personally but yeah just, you know because unless you're gonna spring for two to three times as much for non-glare glass or museum quality glass then you're gonna have to deal with glare you know so you're talking about like in the in you know when we're ordering in rows like you know mounting is one option and then the luster coating or whatever the coating is that's what you're talking about yeah, that's so simple. It's such a simple, easy way to deal with it. And I didn't, I guess I never really thought that that coating was that big of a protection. It, it is, you know, because basically, you know, say having your party, everybody's having a good time. One person gets their elbow knocked, the drink goes on your print, bam. You know, that protective coating, maybe depending on how bad the spill is, it might not save it forever, but if there's just like the tiniest little drop, it's not going to ruin your print. Whereas if that coating isn't there, that one little drop can actually, you know, kind of ruin your print. Okay. Um. <laughs> See, this is the thing is like, I have been a photographer for 15 years and I have like a decent background in this kind of stuff. And like, these are things that even I, I'm so excited to like, you know, after 15 years, I'm not thought about it, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Or just like, yeah, I mean, I guess I just didn't think that luster coating was that much of a thing. I don't think I'm. It's just that little bit of added protection. And so, like I said, you know, the glass, the glass obviously is the most protection you can provide a print. But if you sure. find yourself in a situation where you're just putting it in a frame, that luster coating is just going to give it that little bit of extra so you can dust off your print a little bit. Um, if something gets on it, it's not a big deal to just wipe it off. Obviously, don't be going around with your lights all lights. Rubbing in there, yeah. <laughs> it gives it a little bit of protection from the elements. Cool, awesome. So yeah, I will absolutely do that for any of my prints then that I yeah. order. Then they can treat it more like a canvas and it, it's, it's got then, some yeah. love. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's such a great idea. I guess I just, I guess I only ever thought to do that with like pebble textured stuff or like things I don't really offer, you know? I didn't, yeah. th I didn't think about it for just a regular print. I think that's a great idea. Like, yeah. I'm so glad to like, like I said, it's, it's nice to be like, after so long to be still learning something new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just something a little extra so that it's not just the ink and paper, you know, because that's, that's what you don't want your clients to be doing is being like, oh, it fits in the frame if I take out the glass and, and then it's totally exposed to the elements and, and something might happen to it or like, you know, it might get well, right. And like, actually, that's good to know too because I actually have frames where over time I've broken the glass. Right. So I'm just like, what do I do with this frame now? But but then I would have never thought to actually just put a raw photo, like not behind right. glass. But if I do the luster coating, I could get away with it. Right. If it, you know, if I really wanted to. So that's actually another. Or like any, I mean, any of those textures should be good. As I haven't done any of like the real hard textures from WHCC, I, cause you know, I'm a purist, um, <laughs> but maybe I should, you know, just break out of my skin a little bit and order some samples. Um, <laughs> well, you know, that's kind of like our addiction as photographers. It's like, I just want to see what that looks like. Let me just order a sample. <laughs> and that's actually like part of my album workshop. I'll give you a little sneak peek cause you did watch some of my videos or whatever. Is that, um, one of my things, I have a whole module on like how to do sample albums. And mm -hmm. my hot tip there is put your own photos in the books because by the time they're picking out their album cover, they don't, if the photos don't, they've already booked you. You've already shot their stuff. Like right. you don't need samples of every job you've ever done. You, you know, like I, yeah. So now I actually put my vacation photos in my sample albums. Because <laughs> it costs like a crap ton of money, you know, like, and most of, most of the time it's just that I want to show this cover or that cover or I'm not sure about this company or that company. So I put my own photos in my, in my sample albums now. <laughs> so that's, I guess that's a good idea. I don't know. I don't, I don't, you know, I kind of follow the thing. Don't, don't give too many options. Otherwise people will go crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah so when they're booking me, they only see a couple things, but then when, <laughs> 
like a lot of times they're just most people just aren't visual people so they can't visualize the cut the album they do want but in blue or you know and then most of the websites that we have and stuff it's like the it's so tiny that they're like i don't know what that looks like so i like having a couple covers of like the albums i actually do sell the companies i sell and uh and then i photograph them together and it like you can really see what that brown cover looks like you can really see what the um, but that's one of the reasons I just put my vacation photos in. Cause at that point, like I would never show those books to a client that's trying to book me. It's only like afterwards when they just right. can't, when they just can't visualize like what an inset metal print looks like in the cover or whatever, you know? So yeah, but it's, but it's also like an excuse for me to just get like my stuff printed in an album. <laughs> <laughs> Another, otherwise I'd be lazy like everybody else and do like iPhoto or Shutterfly or, you know, some crappy book. Right, so, right. I'm like, it's nice that I have like my brother's wedding is in a nice book. I feel like such a fraud because I really don't have family photos. Of but that's, a, but I honestly like, that's the, per, <laughs> that's the peril of being a photographer. Anyway, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for helping me today with this. It's like. Oh, I'm, thank you for asking. Like I. I had PTSD palpitations because it was such, it was such a big thing. And it, it hurts me because clients that I would have at the frame counter were angry at their photographer for not thinking about it, you know? And, and I, there was one bride in particular who came to me and she had these gorgeous, huge, several of them prints. And they weren't mounted or anything like that, but there was like one that was like a 33 by 33 square. And there was another that was like, it was like 14 by 32, you know, just like totally like nothing in the realm of standard, like just random weird crops, large format, strange sizes. And they were gorgeous and beautiful. And I know that she paid a boatload of money for him as a photographer because she was angry. She was so mad at how much she had paid for him, for the prints, and then how much it was going to cost her to frame. That's great to know. It gets back to like thinking through your client journey. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I know we've been on for a while. So, all right. Well, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>